Hey, this is Matt Winnick at winningstrength.com, and today we're going to talk about first meeting Louis Simmons and my first trip to Westside Barbell. So I think this will be really interesting for a lot of you guys. It'll go way back, uh, let's see, about 22 years now. So let's get at it. So the year was 1999, I'd already been lifting for about six years, I started in 1993, did my first uh, little bench meet at a local contest, unsanctioned, um, did a couple of unsanctioned meets, 14, 15 years old, by 16, 17 I'm starting to do more state meets, starting to do more national meets, and by 18 and 19 I'm winning my first drug free world championships. The year is 1999, um, we drive over to Columbus, Ohio, which is where I live now, where the gym is now. Actually, the Arnold's only held maybe about three blocks from uh, from Ludus Magnus itself, and uh, so it's odd that I'm here, still here now. Um, so at 19, we're walking around the Arnold Classic, and we're looking at you know back then it wasn't nearly as big as it was or is now, um, and we're walking through the different sectors and seeing all the bodybuilders. There's a couple strongmen there, and there's a couple bench guys. Uh, I remember seeing Glenn Chabot there, which is an old name that a lot of people may not know. Glenn Chabot was breaking right at the 700 pound barrier back when equipment was not really anything big. So the big point is, is uh, Glenn Chabot was a fucking monster. So long story short, we see the bench, bench bash, um, we watched that on stage, that's really the only powerlifting that I can recall at the Arnold Classic that year. And um, I think I see George Halbert and a couple other guys lifting and um, you know I'd heard the name Westside Barbell through Powerlifting USA. So. For those of you guys that don't know, Powerlifting USA hasn't been around for almost 10 years now, but Powerlifting USA was the only publication that you could get and actually look up, number one, where you stood in rankings with everyone else, but two, a lot of really powerlifting and strength specific articles. Even back then, you would see Powerlifting USA on the desks of professional strength coaches, college strength coaches, and everything else because guys like Dave Tate and Louis Simmons and all of them were writing a lot of really good articles in Powerlifting USA probably some of the better strength articles of that time. Um, so I had heard of Westside Barbell and knew that it had a reputation for very strong guys. Um, and we had even had some of their, their lifting, their initial lifting VHS tapes on uh, max effort bench pressing and squatting and et cetera. So we're walking around, we're outside the expo or right outside of where the, uh, uh, where the expo center and all the uh, stuff's ha happening. So you had the hall and then you had the hallway and the hall, the hall was where all the expo center was, and then you walked out in the hallway, and that's like where your concessions and restrooms and all that were going. Well, as soon as the bench bash was done, Louie and Dave and um, Jerry Obradovich, which had won the Arnold Classic Bench Press Championship one year, George Halbert and Kenny Patterson were all walking out of the, uh, the actual hallway where they were holding the bench bash and into the concession area out towards the outside. My good friend Brad Schubert, who worked with my mom in surgery, he was more of an avid bodybuilder type, but he was a pretty good athlete at anything. Was like, hey, dude, there's Louis Simmons. You need to go talk to him about maybe coming over here and training. And my first inclination was like, oh, man, I don't know. I don't want to talk to those guys. And they, there was like 15 of them walking, you know, and they're all like 300 plus pounds. They're all super jacked. And I'm, I'm strong and big for my age, but I'm nothing compared to these guys yet. And uh, finally, Brad just kept pushing me and egging me for the next 15 seconds. And I was like, fine, fuck it. I'll go over and talk to him. So I went over and was like, Hey, Louie, my name's Matt Winning, blah, blah, blah. I've won a couple national meets and a world championship. I'd like to come into your gym and train and whatever. And he asked me how strong I was. So I tell him the numbers. I'm at a 500-pound raw bench. I'm squatting almost 700 pounds at the time, and I'm deadlifting somewhere around 655, somewhere in that range. He's like, oh, you're pretty strong, so come on over. So I would say about, I don't know, maybe three weeks later, I finally get the, get the gall to call him. And I call him, like, hey, this is Matt. I met you at the Arnold. Uh, I'd like to come down to train. He told me, hey, we'll just be there on a, on a Saturday at about 8.30 in the morning, right? And uh, I'm like, okay. So he gives me the address. And at this time, it kind of still is now, but at that time, the Westside Barbell Club was actually in the fucking hood. I mean, uh, right off Demarest, the windows were painted just a flat black. There was no signs. You know, nobody, if you drove by it, you wouldn't even know that some of the strongest guys in the world were there. So, long story short, I finally end up finding the place, and this is the time of MapQuest. You know, you didn't have your cell phones where you could type in your stuff. So, I'm driving around the bad part of Columbus, Ohio, which there are bad parts of Columbus, Ohio, 
to try to find this gym. I finally end up finding it, but I leave like an hour and a half early. Um, it's a two and a half hour drive, so I take off to be there at 8.30, I take off around four in the morning to buy myself another hour in case I get lost, because I don't know Columbus that well at the time. So I finally pull up, and I'm obviously early, and I don't see anybody for a while, and you know, you got that anxiety. I don't know how many of you guys have ever done that, but if you ever go to a gym where you know that they're super strong guys, and you're just first making your way up, what you start finding is you have this, this immense anxiety. You realize that everybody in that gym is stronger than you, and uh, you know, you're know you're there to learn. And a lot of people, I think, they don't get better because they can't be the weaker guy in the gym. They have to always be the strongest guy, even if it hurts their capabilities long term. Me personally, I never was like that. Once I outgrew the strength of the people at my local YMCA and the people in the state, I, I ended up having to go all the way to a different state to train. So um, I ended up pulling up at the gym and Louie's like the first guy to get there, and I can't really tell who anybody is because I don't know anybody at the time. I, um, so I see Louie, and I know obviously know it's him because he's short and you know thick and got a little goatee, and and uh, he's just got a particular build to him. So I see him, I see him walking in. So I finally walk in, and I got my gym bag, I got like a lifting belt and some wrist wraps. I don't know what the fuck I'm getting into, right? So the first time I go there was a bench day, and Dave Tate was in there. Jerry Obradovich, I want to say Kenny Patterson, uh, George Halbert was there, and uh, we're doing we're doing uh, bench press and we're working up, I believe, on pin presses. Uh, for those of you that don't know what pin presses are, it's when you start the weight at a certain distance down and you have to push it up. So it's kind of like a concentric bench. And um, I end up doing somewhere around five plates, and I'm not stronger than anybody else, but I'm hanging with them where they don't have to strip multiple plates off. So they're all kind of, you know, pretty fairly impressed, but they're not really giving me any coaching cues yet, right? I got my hands too wide, like I try to tell a lot of you assholes that don't listen to bring your hands in, right? Uh, but they're not telling me any of that yet. They're just kind of watching to see what I do wrong. So we get done with that, and we go to these tricep rollbacks, right? So we're taking a dumbbell, both hands, and we're rolling back, we're pausing on the ground, and we're throwing them this way. And there was a guy named tilt there he was a humongous black dude weighed like 450 pounds and not all of it was good weight and tilt in size wise should have kicked my ass in any of those exercises we did we worked up to where we were doing 85 pound dumbbells on tricep rollbacks and i was doing like sets of 10. i ended up kicking the shit out of three out of the eight guys that were there on that exercise and i remember louis being so pissed that an outsider could come in and not only hang, but beat a handful of his guys in the strongest crew. Um, at that point, the, the whole demeanor changed, and uh, at least in Louie's eyes. So in Louie's eyes, you know, I had earned the right to come back and train with him because um, I could hang with the group. I was very conscious about making sure that I was helping load the bar. I was picking up what we were doing, even if the veteran guys weren't. And that's another big tip for a lot of you guys. If you're going to another gym, where other people are training, don't forget about the small gym etiquette things that really, really help. And what that means is think about like, are you picking up the weights after the stronger guys? Are you helping load? Are you being, you know, at least supportive, if not aggressive, on making sure other guys get their lifts? If you're like that, chances are the guys are gonna like you. If you're there for yourself only, people can sniff that out really, really fast, and then they're not gonna show you what they can show you. Now Long term, it took me a while to win over George Halbert. So George Halbert and Kenny Patterson were back and forth on who was the better bencher from Westside Barbell. Um, George Halbert tended to have a little bit better numbers at lighter body weight, but Kenny Patterson was much better built to bench. Halbert was just more explosive and quicker. And I, I've, ne I've still to this day never seen pec insertions like I had on George Halbert. George Halbert didn't talk to me the first workout at all until the very end. George Halbert comes up to me and he's looking at me and I'm thinking he's going to give me some praise for just watching a 19 year old kid bench five wheels and he basically grabs the back of my arm and told me he goes your triceps are fucking garbage and walked away that's all he said and I was just kind of like fuck man right you know and then so what he was doing and I've talk, talked about this before maybe in not other YouTube videos but in other podcasts and things is he was testing to see if I was coachable so what he was doing was he was giving me a negative feedback and then he was going to see if I wanted to fix the problem. So I go and ask Louie, hey, George told me I need more tricep work. What do I need to do? So he shows me obviously the rollbacks and that's why we did that exercise that day. 
Um, we, he showed me a lot of cross-body tricep exercise movements, showed me a lot of overhead things to keep my shoulders out of play because what was happening was I was benching five plates, but I was using all shoulder and I was throwing my scapula. So again, if anybody's telling you to bench press and put your scapula forward, walk away or try to run away because guaranteed they have shoulder problems and they never hit anything big in the bench. The point is, is that I took that information that Louie gave me that George had told me my triceps were garbage and the next three to four months, I blasted my triceps and blasted my triceps. Now here's the funny part, is all this information that Louie initially gave me did not make me better immediately. It made me better in about 10 to 14 months. So as I started training, I started to realize that, hey, my numbers aren't going up, but I knew that these guys were high, higher skilled and higher educated than me at the time. And so I just stick with the course. Case in point, about 10 or 11 months later, we're actually doing a, a bench press one rep max. We're doing it raw. Um, I believe it was back home at Ball State with the powerlifting team that myself and another guy named JC started. And uh, I hit 525 like an empty fucking bar. And then I remember 10 months later hitting 550 raw in my, my third year as an undergrad. The point was is that it worked, but it took time to see. Now why I'm telling you this is that all the information that Louis gave me did not work immediately. It took time for my body to adapt and overcome and change. Once that happened, and once the guy, the other guys, the senior guys, noticed that I was coachable because I could take negative information and, and take it and use it, saying, well, fuck that guy. I'm not going to listen to him. I bench 500. Instead, I was like, no, I'm going to listen to everything he says because he weighs 230. I weigh 275. He benches 620, and I bench 500. Makes sense? So sometimes it is somebody that's stronger than you can tell you or maybe give you guidance on what to do. So that's kind of an overview of my first trip to Westside Barbell, my first uh, introduction to driving into the ghetto in Columbus, Ohio, and my first introduction into walking into Westside Barbell and learning to take negative information and make it a positive. So key takeaways are is when make sure that you're, when you go to another gym, that you're cautious about your lifting etiquette, you're cleaning up, you're picking up, and you're being a part of the group. Lesson number two is that some people are going to make you earn their information, and rightly so. If somebody's super nice to you and telling you everything right off the rip, most of the times you won't absorb it. I will remember Halbert telling me my triceps were fucking garbage until I'm in the nursing home and have dementia. The point is, is that sometimes a negative thing can help you positively if you use it correctly and as long as your ego doesn't get in the way. So if you guys need help, we're on online coaching. We have the best staff in the country on online coaching. We have the best manuals in the world on how to train and how to get good sample exercises to not only follow but also learn from. And then we also have a ton of other services like Train Heroic and Patreon to help you get stronger and avoid some of the pitfalls that all of us have hit and not made us as good as we can get as fast as possible. So talk to you guys later.